The videos presented herein are based on the secret dreams of Muhammad Qasim, which he has been reluctant to share with others. The author of these videos have recently become aware of these secret dreams and are publicizing them under the premise that Qasim was commanded by Allah to share these dreams with the public. Despite his objection about doing so, Qasim's secret dreams are being made public in order to illustrate a more comprehensive picture of his identity and the role he will play near the end of times. We leave the viewer up to their own judgment. We believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad wasallam is the last and final messenger of Allah. Qasim says, In a dream between 2003 and 2005, I see myself in a train with a few people going towards where Prophet Isa salam was. On the way there, Ya'juj and Ma'juj attack our train and then I overcome and kill them by the mercy of Allah by using Allah's nur on my index finger. I have seen this nur on my index finger in many dreams but I don't know exactly what this is or how I use it. Perhaps it is symbolic. Allah knows best. In the Ya'juj Ma'juj dream, for the first time, I saw how I used this nur on my index finger. After some time on the train, me and my companions reach Prophet Isa alayhi salam around Fajr time. I get off the train and a sibling of mine is also with me. When my sibling witnesses all of the signs and sees Isa alayhi salam in front of them, then they say expressing realization that Qasim, this means that you actually are the Imam Mahdi. After hearing this, I smile back at them and I think to myself that so much has happened and my sibling has witnessed all of the events including Ghazwatul Hind, Dajjal and Ya'juj and Ma'juj and other events. And only now, after seeing Isa alayhi salam, they have come to this realization. Then me and my companions head into the building and it was time for Fajr prayer. I then hear someone say that it is now time for Fajr prayer and we must pray first. Isa alayhi salam proclaims loudly that today Qasim will lead the prayer. Then I say to Isa alayhi salam that in the presence of a prophet, who am I to lead the prayer? You must lead the prayer. And Isa alayhi salam responds back saying, no, today you will have to lead the prayer. Isa alayhi salam continues to say that Qasim, I want to pray behind you so that all these people can witness that I am also here to follow the Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and I'm not here to establish another religion. I'm here to follow the path of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and when I pray behind an ummati of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then people will realize this. I then agree to Isa alayhi salam's request and I say that okay I will lead the prayer this time but after today you will have to lead the other prayers. To this, Isa alayhi salam responds back by saying, Okay, I can do this. By this point in time, there are only a few believers left on the earth. Most of them have been slain by the Dajjal. Me and my companions live out the rest of our lives in peace with Isa alayhi salam in Medina. I have seen that Isa alayhi salam gets married and also has a daughter. There are also others who are left on the earth, the most wretched of disbelievers numbering in the tens of thousands. They come out of hiding after Ya'juj and Ma'juj are all dead and they begin worshipping Iblis who emerges openly in public. I have seen Iblis in my dreams as a decrepit old man. May Allah curse him. Finally, I have also seen the beast of the earth whose likeness resembles that of a goat with short horns. He stands upright and has an off-white ivory fur color. And Allah knows best. It was narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A group among my Ummah will continue to fight for the truth until Jesus the son of Mary will descend and the Imam of them will ask him to lead the prayer. But Jesus replies, You have more right to it, and verily, Allah has honored some of you over others in this Ummah. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, 
Soon the son of Mariam will descend among you as a just judge. He will break the cross, kill the pigs and abolish the jizya, and wealth will become so abundant that no one will accept it. According to a version narrated by Muslim, it is written, By Allah, the son of Mariam will certainly come down as a just judge. He will break the cross and kill the pigs, and he will abolish the jizya. The young she-camels will be left alone and no one will show any interest in them. Spite, mutual hatred and mutual envy will disappear, and when they are called to be given wealth, no one will accept it. Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, what this means is that there will be no interest in wealth and there will be no desire to keep a lot of wealth. There will be few wishes and no want, and there will be the knowledge that the resurrection is at hand. Young she-camels are mentioned because they are the noblest of camels and the most precious of wealth to the Arabs. This is like the verse in which Allah says, And when the pregnant she-camels are neglected. Al-Taqwir 81, 4 What is meant by the words, and no one will show any interest in them? is that they will not be taken care of, and their owners will neglect them and not look after them. This will be a stage of goodness, faith, and prevalence of the Muslims. The people will remain for seven years with no enmity between any two people. Then Allah will send a cool wind from the direction of Syria, and there will be no one left on the face of the earth in whose heart there is an atom's weight of goodness or faith, but it will cause him to die. Even if one of you were to enter the heart of a mountain, it would enter upon him, and cause him to die. There will be no one left but the most evil of people upon whom the hour will come. Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the hour will not begin until there is no one left on earth who says, Allah, Allah. Abdullah ibn Masood, may Allah be pleased with him, said, among the most evil of mankind will be those on whom the hour comes when they are still alive, and those who take graves as places of worship. There will be left the most evil of people who will be as careless as birds and be as cruel as wild animals. They will not acknowledge any good or denounce any evil. Then the shaitan will appear to them and will say, Will you not listen to me? They will say, What do you command us to do? He will command them to worship idols, but despite that they will have ample provision and a good life. Then the trumpet will be blown. Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, said in his commentary, With regard to the words of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, there will be left the most evil of people who will be as careless as birds and be as cruel as wild animals. The scholars said, What is meant is that in their haste to do evil and fulfill their desires, they will be like birds, and in their enmity and wrongdoing towards one another, they will be like wild animals.